I should be. All right. Only one second, guys. Let me just grab my thing that we're going to work on. All right, can everyone on Zoom hear me? Okay, let me make sure I can hear you all if y'all need to talk. I can awesome. hear you. Perfect, awesome, sweet. All right, so last time we left off on number, we finished number 10 and that was a bond equity problem where we figured out the bonds that were broken and we figured out the bonds that were formed and we used our equation of the heat of reaction is equal to the um, bonds broken minus the bonds formed, the heat of the bonds broken minus the heat of the bonds formed, right? And we calculated our answer to be negative 710. The first few questions on that last, uh, are there any questions on this last one we did from Wednesday? And it just occurred to me that on Wednesday session, we said for y'all to do problems 11 through 20. Raise your hand or type something in the chat if y'all have done those problems. Oh my. I know Michelle had to, you know, Michelle's always on top of everything. So, like, Michelle, you, you didn't let me down or Rich down, right? You did your 10 problems. Yes, sir. I'd like to see it. All right. So, it's okay if you didn't. It's just, when you when you try these on your own and you see like okay I don't understand this problem you can actually when we go over it here you can actually ask questions rather than just go along with the you know go with the flow and go with the motion. All right, so consider the following Lewis structure. Which statement about the molecule is false? I'll give y'all you know maybe a couple minutes on this problem. Anybody have an answer? Tom, where you have an answer? I think so. What might your answer be, Tom? E. Okay, we got one vote for D. I'll put a, put a star next to it. I'm going to write the name of the person who said D. Um, anyone on Zoom have a quick answer that they got? Michelle, what did you get? Good talk. <laughs> okay, what did you get? Um, same thing. Got D as well. Okay. So we got two people that say D. Okay. Anyone else? So to figure this out, let's go ahead and count our valence electrons. So each hydrogen always brings to the table how many valence electrons? One, right? So we have one here. All these hydrogens bring one to the table. What about the carbons? Four. So four, 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 four. And oxygen brings how many? Six. six. Let's just count that up. So we do six plus four is 10 plus four, eight, 12 is 22, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there's eight valence, uh, 28 valence electrons. Oh, and this is asking for which one? Oh, wait, the is oxygen it? has lone pairs, right? I, yes. I didn't. Well, you always lone pairs. You don't, even have, you don't even have to like include that. You should always just be thinking about. How many each atom brings to the table? Because the lone pairs are included in the total. Oh, 
So there's one there is in fact 28 valence electrons in this molecule. Okay. So that therefore D cannot be correct because it's asking for which one is false. So um anyone on Zoom get any other answer choices? Answers? <laughs> Wait, is that okay? Alex says A. There are 10 sigma bonds and two pi bonds. Check it this way. Oh, this guy finally decides to not be virtual. That's true. Yeah. If I, if I lived here, then, I, then yes, I would agree. Okay. So so Tomer said A is true. Let's just count it out. So we know every single bond has one sigma bond and every double bond has one sigma bond and one pi bond. So we let's erase all these numbers here. Um, okay. So we have two double bonds, right? So that's gonna tell us two pi bonds, um, right? Two pi. And then we have how many total bonding areas? Because each of those bonding areas will have one sigma bond. For sure, and if the double bond, it'll still have one sigma bond and one pi bond. So let's see. That's one, two, three, four. This double bond has one sigma bond, so it's in blue. The red one, um, actually, I should change this up here. So the the two pi will be in red. So we have a pi bond right here with the oxygen and carbon, and we have a sigma bond there, there. Another one there, and we have a pi bond right here, and then another sigma bond. Two more there. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So ten sigma and two pi bonds is what we count, and it's asking for which one is false. So A is true. Is there any other anyone else get a different answer choice? Is it C? And. It is C actually. So you have to look at the electron rich regions and you have to realize that if oxygen has two bonds and it doesn't have a formal charge, how many uh, lone pairs does it have? It needs to pull out tet. So if it has, if it's sharing four in bonds and it's four more, right? So it has two lone pairs. So lone pairs here. And for hybridization, you always go based off the electron uh, rich regions. So if there's three electron rich regions, one here, one here, and one here around the oxygen, that's going to tell us that it's sp2 hybridized. You kind of you can kind of think of this as like uh, right. Okay, so this sp2, there's three electron domain area. Wait, what is so he hasn't gone over that? Okay. Yeah, so that's okay. Um, you should go over it soon, hopefully, but it's not going to hurt you if you start getting introduced to it now. It's not too difficult of a concept either, so you, uh, you should be able to grasp it. Why don't you include the sigma bond for the electron? Because they're all in the same region. So like this bond right here is considered one electron like region. Okay. And then you have another electron region right here with this lone pair and another one here. Now, if we look at this carbon right here, it clearly has four different electron rich regions, right? SP3. SP3, right? So if it has four different electron rich regions, then you have to, you can kind of, I wouldn't want to say memorize this, um, but you can say you need four letters total, right? So S, P, uh, P, P would give you SP3, right? So that carbon is SP3 hybrids. And that's the maximum it can go up to three before you add the D, D right? Yeah. Okay. yeah, so this this oxygen over here would have S, P, and this P. So it must be SB2. This carbon right here, carbon number two would have S, P, P. This would also be SP2 hybridized carbon. And you might think, why is this so important? For, honestly, for this class, you kind of need just to learn how, like what hybridization is, but you'll eventually apply this once you get to organic chemistry. And 
When you take OCHEM 1, you'll realize that orbitals can like sort of mix with each other. So you have like a hybrid, like SP orbital. That's why carbon can form four bonds actually, because of those uh, SP hybridized orbitals. But you'll, you'll learn that once you get to OCHEM. So the answer is C. And that's because around oxygen, we have three electron regions and that corresponds to SP3 hybridized. Okay. Any questions on this? Uh, any questions on Zoom? No? Okay. Ask your questions, guys. No one's gonna no one's gonna clown on you besides a rich hmm? if you don't understand anything, okay? I mean I mean even I won't clown on you. Exactly. Sorry. All right. So the hybridization of the central atom in aluminum bromide is what? I'll give you all a second to think about this. And then we'll go on with our lives. Probably got this one. Yeah, this one is cool. You made me late. So sorry. Are these all cremate? No. You didn't get the one. No, this is called the central switch matter. What is it? The central switch. I don't know that one. Yeah. Oh, you got me one? Yeah, I got you one. That's just for Audi one. Where's Audi anyways? She actually said she said you were annoying her last class. Wow. Like, because I, told, Sorry, because I told her to stop talking so loud when the session is in session. The session. Yeah. Wait, yeah, that's rude. I have a question. Yeah. The electron rich regions, the, the sigma bonds included as well, right? So this, a double bond is only considered one electron rich region. Yeah. Yes. But it's including the, it's, it's including the double bond. It's including, it's, it's double double bond. So the sigma and the pi bond. Oh, thank you. All right, you ready, Rish? Yep. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and go over this. Um, so let's let's first of all make a table, as I believe that helps people understand the concept of hybridization. <laughs> so we'll do this first. We'll say number of electron domains. That's what that's called, by the way, electron rich regions. They're called electron domains. And then make another column that says hybridization. Hybridization. And then we'll list this off one through six. So, or not one through six, sorry, two through six. Two, three, four, five, and six. Wait, so basically, you know, right? I, yeah. Okay, I know you just said there's no one, but does hydrogen have an electron domain? Hydrogen. This has an S orbital. Yeah. So oh, it, 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 it can't hybridize because it doesn't have P orbitals. Oh, okay. So it only has the S orbital. Yeah, hybridization is a mixing of the S and the P. So or since you need like a minimum of two orbitals, that's why you start with two. So number of electron domains, if there's two electron rich regions, that's something like this, like carbon, carbon, triple bond. So notice how there is, if we're talking about the hybridization, right, of this carbon right here, there's one thing here and two things here. So there's two things attached to the carbon atom. So the hybridization will be SP. And then an example of three electron domains, something like we saw earlier, let's do this though. Uh, Carbon double bond of oxygen. So if we're talking about the hybridization, uh, hybridization of this carbon atom, there's one, two, three things attached to that carbon atom. So the hybridization will be sp2. Then four, let's look at CH4 for this one. So there's one here, two, three, and then four. So there's four things attached. So the hybridization is sp3. So for five electron domains. Uh, what's something on the top of my head? Uh, let's see. Let's skip five and go to six. <laughs> XEF4 is an example of the six things attached. So you have xenon, fluorines, four of them. And on top of that, you got two lone pairs of the xenon. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six things attached. So six things attached, hybridization will be SP3. 
A2. And then hybridization for things with five things attached. Sorry, I don't have an example right now off the top of my head. I'll write it down when it comes to mind, but hybridization right now. Oh, wait, let's look at this PF5. Hybridization for PF5. So there's phosphorus with four fluorines around it. In this case, right? Uh, phosphorus has five things attached. So if we're looking at the hybridization of the phosphorus item, it would be something called sp 3 p Now, something else you need to notice, right, is look at how, like, look at sp 3 for example. There's one S, right, since we didn't write anything there, so it's assumed to be like one. Like when you do like 10 to the power of one, it's 10. So S is to the power of one, P is to the power of three. If you add those up, what's the result you'll get? Yeah. So, so what's yeah. one plus three, please? Yep. So oh, there's four. So it adds up to four. Four electrons. That, that's something that you can do to check if your hybridization is right. That's interesting. All right. Anyways, no, yeah, enough of that. Let's go to the actual question. And like somebody else I heard like game comments. Michelle says this helps a lot, by the way. Thank you. Thanks. You're Thanks. welcome, Michelle. That's all me. I told him to do this. No, he definitely did. But uh, okay. Let's look at the hybridization of the central item ALBR3. What's your what's your first step? Your first step, right, is to draw your Lewis structure. So let's do that. So there's seven valence electrons, right, in bromine, and there's three in aluminum. Seven times three is 21. Plus three is 24. So there's 24 valence electrons total. I was drawing out aluminum's in the center, followed by three bromines, because aluminum's the least electronegative, and bromine only likes to have one bond. So if we connect all these, right, 24 minus 6, 24 minus 6, that's 18 valence electrons. And then, right, how many valence electrons that each of these bromines need to be satisfied? More. Yeah. How many? Yeah, I mean six yeah. six. So we can just go ahead and draw those pairs around all of these six. So 18 minus 18, zero. But wait, aluminum doesn't have a full octet. Exactly. Yeah, aluminum is one of those exceptions. Like boron and aluminum are electron deficient, so they can have less than just, just eight electrons. Or like that whole column. Uh, yeah, yeah, just just more on a little bit. Okay. I just don't make Remember, everything above period three can have an expanded octet, so it can have more than eight electrons. And then, like, as we saw in the example of PF5. So above period three can have an expanded octet? Yeah, like period three and below. Or like below, the number, yeah. The number. Yeah, like, bigger. yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Okay. Exactly. So anything. Below, below period three on the periodic table can have expanded on 10. I was thinking of it like the number's larger, that's why I said it. But anyways, and boron and aluminum, especially, can have deficient on 10s. Those are the only two that have electron uh, not electron And deficient. beryllium. And, and beryllium as well, yeah. yeah. Boron, beryllium, and three are electron deficient. Anyways, why does that matter? It matters because this is, in fact, the correct flow structure for ALBR3. Now, y'all tell me, what's the hybridization of the central atom? Is it B? Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, B, SB2. So let's see, there's one, two, three things attached to this aluminum. So hybridization is, in fact, SB2. Yeah, so the correct answer is B. Questions about any of that? If y'all are confused as well on the exam, go ahead and make the table. So like list out your electron domains, two through six, hybridization, you can list out all that. Draw out the Lewis structure and then look at how many things you have attached to your central atom. Most likely for hybridization, they'll ask you only about the central atom. But in case they ask you about like a surrounding atom as well, you can just do the same steps and you'll get to the same result. Does it only go up to six in this class? It, it does, yeah. Oh. I mean, in fact, the highest I've seen is six. Oh, because yeah, you can only have like octahedral things in our cards, mm -hmm. right? Which has six things yeah. attached to it. I suppose technically, right, you could have a hybridized sp, d, and f orbital, but I've never seen that in my life. So, yeah. Interesting. All right. Any questions on that before we move on to the next? Uh,
Another hybridization question. In which of the compounds below is there more than one kind of hybridization? So that's basically saying, like, in which of these will the hybridization not be the same? So here are your options CH, CH2, CH2, CH3, CH3, CH, double bond, CH, CH3, CH2, CH, CH, CH2, H, C, triple bond, and H. Give you a couple minutes. By a couple, I mean like two. Yeah. Oh, okay. So. It was. CH, CH2. Yeah, it's CH2. Okay. I don't know. Let me draw it out. I don't know. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, how you going? would be so mad right now. Okay, if you see a double one, you know, yeah, for sure. It's just, it's not. It's not. This doesn't have four. It has three. That was my. That was my strong point. No, there's a there's a variation. C H. Oh, okay. That's what I drew it wrong. Hold on. C H C H. It's C this H six. Oh, it's H three. Which one are you drawing? It's H two. Which one are you drawing? I'm drawing the third one. Okay. Oh, are we drawing different ones? No, no. I know. Okay, wait. What else? I, yeah, I drew wrong. Yeah, now it's one, two, four. Yeah, this one is the same. Number three is the same. One, two, three. I'm just not using the double bonds. That would be a typo to be honest. Yeah, this question. <laughs> how do you start on the CHD? Oh, how do you start on the CHD? Oh my God, that's got to be a typo. It's not that. It's not. Oh I'm, so, I'm laughing way too much for this. All right, just give him like a random. Okay, let's, let's, do, let's do this. Wait, so number one is. No, number, number one, there's a typo. You can oh. add a lone pair, no? To the carbon? Otherwise, if you do, there'll be a negative charge. So, what if we just add a CH2 group to the end? <laughs> well, I was going to do with CH3, CH, CH2, two CH2s. <laughs> Those are the CH3, CH2, CH, CH3. Yeah. 
This works. CH2. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Mm -hmm. All right. With those four molecules. Well, you right. just deleted the CH. Well, oh, okay. Doesn't it go Okay. Which one has more than one kind of hybridization? So basically, like, which one doesn't have like a consistent hybridization? Oh, so not the first one. I I not the first one. Yeah. I I two oh two. I was watching Pirates of the Caribbean. I, <laughs> so I, I hear I hear a lot of twos right now. Makes me glad. I I am indeed not going to be number two next semester, but still. Mm, we'll see. Wait, so. It's just a digital. So are you going to elaborate that on that? Or you can elaborate on that? Or no. Oh, no elaborate. So what do you yeah. All right. So not, I'm not even the other thing. Okay. No, number two. Let's let's look at that. So what is the hybridization of this carbon right here that underlines? Yes. Because there are four things attached. So S, some people do the S, P, 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 whatever method. Okay. I, I just go one, two, three, four. So one, two, yeah. three, four things attached. What about this carbon? SP2. SP2. Yes. Because there is one, two, three. Hey, you don't count the double bond, Marie? No. Why don't you count the double bond? Um, the double bond is still just one region. Yeah, but if you go right here, there's like one region, then another region. So one, two, three, four. Should it be SP3? Yeah. Why not? That's not how you do it. That's because one of those is actually in a pi orbital or a p orbital. So the other sigma bond is an SP2 hybridized orbital. Um, not really. No. no. We take OK and one. What about what about this card? SP2. SP2 again, so same exact thing. So one here, two here, three here, three here, attached, that's it. Now, what about this end, CH3? Not CH3, the carbon. SP3, exactly. Thanks, Michelle. So SP3, hybridize, the last one. All right, so right off the bat, I see some inconsistent hybridizations. Some are SP2, some are SP3. So there's not one hybridization throughout the entire thing. Whereas over here for this car, for the first one, everything was like, like, like where and one. What about the what about the third one? What, uh, what do we think? Hybridization of the, this car. What about this? Oh, they're all SP2. There are always the yes. because there are always three things attached to every single carbon. The shelves of the geographies. Yeah, I mean, I can well, I agree. Yeah, I agree with you, Michelle. Okay. All right. So, number four. What's the hybridization of this carbon? SP. SP. There's only two things. One, two. What? All right. What about this carbon? Also SP. Also SP. I agree with Michelle. I agree with you. But transitive property, you also agree with Michelle. All right, so transitive properties aside, so we got SP2s and SP3s in number two, whereas for one, all, everything was SP3, three, everything was SP2, for four, everything's SP. So our correct, uh, what's our correct answer? I mean, people said it before, so yeah, it's B. There's only two has Inconsistent hybridization. So some are SP3, some are SP2. Questions about that? Yep. All right. Yep. All right. We chose the double bond with carbon. How is that? It's just. Um, 
Because right, the double bond counts as one region. Like you look at the regions of electrons, not like the double bond. Okay. Yeah. Wait. So this double bond is like one electron region. This triple bond is like also one thing. Because all the electrons are concentrated in one area. Yeah. Um, what is hybridization? Hybridization, right, is like long story short, it's basically two orbitals combined together. And then through that, you can form like certain bonds. Like, for example, right, what's the electron configuration of carbon? 1s2, 2s2, and I think 2p4. 2p4? 2p2. 2p2, yeah. So since it is 2p2, right, you, so you expect carbon to form two bonds to stuff? Like, you only expect carbon to form two bonds since there's only like two outer electrons. Yeah, carbon forms four bonds. And the reason why is something called hybridization. So hybridization, right, the X and the, the S and the P orbitals actually overlap with each other. So they'll create sort of like an SP hybrid orbital. So instead of just a P orbital and S orbital for carbon, you'll have four SP3 orbitals. Wait, she said the S orbital and the P orbital overlap? Yeah. S and the P overlap. So we'll have is four sp3 orbitals with one electron in each of them for carbon. And that's how carbon can form four bonds. I don't know there's two. I got a pretty good analogy for this guy. Don't worry. I'm gonna pull an angular real quick. They want an image. Okay, so if we look at this carbon has the one s orbital is, is filled, right? Two s is filled. And then you have your 2p, which is higher in energy, which only has two electrons in it. But you know, <laughs> so, but we know carbon likes to form four bonds. Let's just look at methane. And you, you think it's like ideal for carbon to have um, four bonds with different amount of energies? Because these are the valence electrons, right? You can form, you can pull two of these. Uh, p orbitals and pop them in here, but they wouldn't be the same in energy. And our carbon wants all their orbitals to be similar in energy. So what you do is you kind of take some of the s orbital and some of the p orbitals. So you, since we have one s orbital right here, you're going to want to take that one over here. You're going to form four separate orbitals. They're going to take these three p orbitals and you're going to take this one s orbital and you're going to kind of like put it in a bottle and like shake them together and mix them so you will get a hybrid of sp3 orbitals each of them contain one electron in it so they're all similar in energy and and they're all going to be have like have an energy that's halfway between s and p so maybe, maybe, you know, we're all college students, right? So maybe this will help if you still don't understand it, all right? Say someone gives you a bottle of vodka, right? And they give you three cups of cranberry juice. Are you just gonna drink the entire bottle of vodka by itself? Maybe some of y'all would, but no. ideally probably not, right? You're gonna get slammed before 12, 12 a.m., right? And yeah, we don't want that, okay? So what you do is you say, if you want it to be really strong still, let's say for this right here, what we looked at earlier, aluminum bromide, you take the S orbital, you take that vodka, and you dilute it by taking two P orbitals to give you three sp2 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 orbitals so again you took your s orbital you took two of these p orbitals and you didn't want to dilute it by adding all the cranberries so you left the p you left one of these p orbitals out so you would technically still have an empty p orbital which would be up here somewhere you just you would still have a p orbital up here all right but you're using these electrons here. And we know aluminum has three valence electrons, so it would be in there. 
you would use your sp2 hybrid orbitals to form these bonds between bromine all right but like um let's say let's look at this one over here this one right here where we had the sp hybridized orbitals say you're like okay fine i won't drink the whole thing of vodka by itself i'll dilute it with just one cup of cranberry juice so you got a whole liter of vodka and you're putting one cup of cranberry juice and it's still going to be pretty strong right this is being recorded right here. Okay, interesting. <laughs> okay, so you take one of these S orbitals and you only take one of the P orbitals, right? And you're gonna kind of put them in a container and you're gonna stir the container so that way your cranberry is perfectly mixed with your vodka. And then you're gonna get an two orbitals that are SP hybridized orbitals. Each one containing your electrons, and then you have these p orbitals that are still up here. And these are going to form your pi bonds, right? So you still have electrons in here for each carbon, which is why we see there's a sigma bond in here that's made by an sp hybridized orbital. There's this sigma bond here that's made by another sp hybridized orbital. But you still have your two cups of cranberry up here that are uh, contributing to the pi bonds that are in the triple bond right here. Okay. Um, honestly, I don't know if that made sense. Maybe it might help, you know. That probably beats the Bieber analogy. The, the Bieber? Oh, that's good. That's good. Yeah, that one wasn't a good one, to be honest. But is there any questions? So the whole idea is that you're you're taking these orbitals, you're putting them in a little container, you're shaking it up, and you're kind of getting a mixture of both of the orbitals, all right? Any questions? I know, I know some of y'all might have understood it better after this little analogy. You're like, oh, that makes sense. You know, vodka cran, you want it to be very strong, but you want it to be too strong. Okay. Any questions? No? No, no. no. <laughs> well, I bet you have a lot of experience. That's what gets you through the first semester of college, huh? Okay, let me clear off some of this stuff. <laughs> All right, so number 14. A pi bond is a result of the blank, blank. Even going to give you all 30 seconds. That's in your second chart. Yeah. 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 Remember the slides out. Yes, okay. Anyone have an answer? Uh, I got one person saying uh, B. I agree. Okay. B agrees. I agree. Ah. <laughs> I agree too. Okay. So, tell me, what do you think? I also think B. Following the others, huh? I actually I circled it. He circled it. He gave me the answer. It's wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Didn't you just kind of explain wait, no, it in the wait, no. analogy? I kind of did just explain it in the analogy. You know? Yeah, you did. So, what is the answer, Jake? I think you want to explain your answer, Jake? I don't know. Because, as you said, in the I did in the uh, like the chart, what was the hydrocarbon that you went through? Like we had to have that. We had to have that mixture of the sp orbital in order to have the higher p orbitals. But it's asking about a, a bond, not the orbital. So you are sort of right, but so a pi bond. Let's if we were to draw out this molecule here. I love that. Let me make this really That's that's a little if we had so to uh, okay. maybe she didn't take it like 
right. Oh, yeah. We're going to draw this out using our orbitals. You would have the carbon here, and this is the sigma bond, and it directly overlaps with the other carbon sigma bond. And this, ha this has two more sigma bonds, which overlaps with the S orbital. We know the S orbitals are circled for hydrogen. So, all right. And then you would have that another sigma bond and then H. So if you were to draw the orbitals, they would kind of look something like this, okay? So we're missing the, the pi bond here. The pi bond is not this bond. This is a sigma bond, right? Because we know every double bond, every double bond has a sigma bond and a pi bond. So each of these carbons is what? Hybridization? SP3. Two. SP2 two hybridized, SP2, right? Two, three, three, oh, yes. Three. So SP2 hybridized. So they still have, so we have three orbitals here that are SP2, right? For all these three. And then we have this empty P orbital up here. We erased all this. So that empty P orbital is what's going to be making the pi bonds. So, right? And if we were to draw it out, it would look something like this. So you got to think of these as being on the plane of the page. And this is kind of popping out of the page at you, okay? So it's gonna go up and this is kind of go, gonna go down like that. I'm gonna see if I can rotate this a little better. So remember, this is trigonal planar. So it's all in the same uh, plane. And these pi bonds are popping out and going into the screen. And each one has some uh, pi bond or a pi or a p orbital, and that pi bond looks like this. And since pi, pi bonds are not direct overlaps of orbitals, that's what sigma bonds are. These pi bonds are a lot weaker than sigma bonds. So only it takes like a hundred kilocalories to break this bond, where it has only takes like sixty one kilocalories to break a pi bond. It's because these are direct overlaps of orbitals, whereas this is kind of it's obviously not a direct overlap. You have this electron density area in the middle that's kind of flowing constantly between the two. So pi bonds are direct results of two p orbitals that are overlapping each other and exchanging electron density. Okay? It's kind of like how it's a little red thing that's going back and forth. Okay, so in this case, the answer is overlap of two p orbitals um longer axis. All right. I see I see some of y'all were kind of kind of confused by the explanation, but basically what what he's trying to say, right, is well, how how is a pi bond even created? It's created because you have an sp2 hybridized carbon, right? That has those three hybrid sp2 orbitals that Dylan was explaining before. But there's one 2p orbital, right? That's not completely filled. In fact, it's completely empty. So for that, right? It's not empty. It has, a, yeah. it has an electron. Yeah, it's got it's got one lone electron. So this p orbital, right? So there are these empty p orbitals, and what happens, right? These empty p orbitals will sort of overlap with each other. So you'll have these. This p orbital has one lone electron. This p orbital has one lone electron. And since there's two p orbitals, they want to be together. So basically, they'll overlap each other on their axis. Like on their axis, basically means like they're on the same like. Plane. So they're both like, in this case, facing vertical. And then these two will sort of bond with each other. So there's this one sigma bond here created by this sp2 hybridized carbon or uh, uh, sp2 hybrid orbital. And then there's this p orbital, right? This pi bond as created by the electrons in this p orbital. And if that confuses you even more, just remember that pi bond starts with p. So it has to have a p orbital. P orbital, pi bond. <laughs> yeah, so all these orbitals right here are sp2 hybridized orbitals um, right here, the ones that are the carbons. Okay. And the ones that are circles are the hydrogens at the orbitals. <laughs> and then these p orbitals are the red ones that are, you remember, they're not empty. I think Rish might have said that a couple of times, but they're not empty. They have one electron in it for bonding, each one. So that's why you can form a a pi bond here that the pi bond has a total of two electrons, one from each carbon, and that 
the exchange of electron density can be pushed over this space between the p orbitals. And that's what a pi bond is, all right? Uh, like, yeah, 10, 11-ish. Oh, yeah, we just got to 10 today. So you don't understand, Barry? Well, what do you not understand? <laughs> Oh, I'm so lost. I can't even like articulate questions. But it's just like actually for you. So sigma is an overlap between an S and a P. No. Sigma, sigma is caused by your hybrid orbitals. Sigma is a direct overlap of orbitals. Okay. It's any sigma. orbital? Any. Oh, see, look at right here. So right here, there's two. Copy. There's two sp2 hybridized orbitals, one from each carbon. This is still direct overlap. So this is a sigma bond. But you have Direct this though. you have this overlap of an sp2 hybridized orbital from this carbon and the s orbital of a hydrogen that's still considered a sigma bond because they're direct overlap, which is why I drew them like uh yeah, exactly on top of each other like that. Right. But these that are not direct overlaps and are sharing electrons are p orbitals. Okay. All right. Does that make sense, Maria? Yeah. Sigma. Any questions on Zoom? I know there's people in here that have questions. So if there's people in here that have questions, I know there's people on Zoom that have questions that are not asking them. If you understand, maybe you don't like, maybe you're just like, uh, and you don't have questions because you don't even know what to ask questions about. But if you do have questions, feel free to ask. Wait. Yeah. You know, like there's the Sigma bond. I thought like, you know, like the three bond was basically a pi bond and then a sigma bond. The three bond? Like there's like a three. Or the, or the triple bond. bond? Yeah, the triple bond. The triple bond is weird. So it's triple one bond. sigma bond and then two pi bonds. So it'll have two of these sort of p orbitals on each other. Yeah. Oh, yeah. so that's how you know how many pi bonds are kind of weird. So, so you would have your sp orbitals right here. So that's what you all right, so, and then you would have another SP here overlapping with the hydrogen. This is what I'm drawing right here. This is the molecule I'm drawing. And then I'm going to do it with the orbital so you can kind of see. And we know SP hybridized uh, things are always linear, so which is why I'm drawing it in a straight line. So the first pi bond would go something like this. It would look like that. And there would be an electron in here and an electron in here. And they would be exchanging their electron density. The other one would be along a different axis. So you can kind of think of this. If this is the y axis, this is the x axis. The other one's going to be popping out of the page on the z axis. OK, so it would be kind of like that. All right. Remember, these are popping out of the page. So this one, these two right here are going to be going in back into the page. And these two are going to be pop coming out of the page, all right? And there would be some exchange of electron density in this manner right here. It's, it's really weird to picture. I know it was something I kind of had a hard time with at first, but then I kept studying and trying, looking at this. The, the more time you're exposed to this, the more, the sooner it'll make sense. So if you don't understand this, don't neglect it, because if you have to take organic, it's gonna come bite you from behind. This is one of the first thing you go over in organic, by the way, chapter one. Chapter one, yeah. Okay, so <laughs> that is a little interesting. All right, if there's no questions on that, we can go to the next one. Hybridization of the lead atom in PBCl4 is what? Is it SP3? Yes. Mm -hmm. But lead can have an expanded octet. It doesn't have one in this case. Hmm. Interesting. It's a lead can have. Oh, it's below here. Okay. So you don't know trick. No, I know. You're down. And no, xenon? It stops here. It stops after the it. It's just like it's a group. So let's read the D. 
I don't think there's a D. It doesn't Is there? No. So the thing with D orbitals, right? After SP3, those sort of show up. Like the only one you'll see them as is SP3 and then SP3. Hang on for this class. I don't think y'all came into this time, but I made like a whole table for all the hybridizations. I'm going to scroll to that. I'll, I'll, I'll do it at the end so we can take a picture. But we're going to go over no. this one. So, what is the answer? Sammy. Sammy says D. Did anyone else get D for number 15? You got D? Yeah. Anyone else? Yeah, y'all. Okay. What about people on Zoom? Maybe. D. Oh, okay. Is there another? I speed up. So, if you're going to, you got to be confidently right or wrong. So, maybe D, or is it D or not D? It's D. It is D. So, if you were to draw this out, it would look something like this. You may leave that to my answer. And I, and I draw my bonds for <laughs> It would look something like that. And clearly, we have four electron uh, domains around lead, which says we should have hybridization of sp3 hybridized. People are probably going to say, oh, but lead is a transition metal. Is lead a transition metal? No, right? It's in the same group as carbon, so it's going to have similar properties, although it's, it is a heavier metal. So, Or if you look here, right, the chlorine obviously has a minus one charge, and there's four chlorines here, so lead must have a four charge, plus four. Exactly. All right. And if you go back to your naming, what is uh, the name of this using the ick and us format? Columbus, no, plumbic chloride. Here we go. What's the other charge for lead? Plus two. And that would be plumbus. Yeah. Where are you going to So a little review for the fun. All right. Let's see. I think so. Okay. Let's see if you all remember which of the following inequalities accurately describes the relationship between two ionic species in terms of size. So which of these statements is true? Oh, it's A. What do you mean? Do you even look at it? I don't have to look at it's A. Interesting. How? It's anions are bigger than cations. Why is right? But are they in the same are look? Are they isoelectronic species? But it's a cation. It's, it's an atomic radii or no? It's why it's a cation. And loses three, so it's going to go up to krypton. Where's arsenic? Three minus. Oh, yeah, arsenic's smaller. Hmm? And then lithium plus. It loses, and that's the smallest one. We're talking about minus. size here. Ionic radius. These are ions. Oh. These are cations, they're going to lose them. They have to go back. They go back to the normal ions. Yeah, you go back for cations, four for anions. Yeah, just look at it like it loses one, it jumps here, and then it loses another one, it jumps That's four. Cool. That's only radius. Radius is a different because how do I explain this? It's just a trend. Okay, let's start from the bottom. Is SE2 minus bigger than E3 minus? Or is C3 minus bigger than SE2 minus? C3 is bigger. Why? Because it has a larger negative charge. Mm. But are they in the same? No. Are they in the same? No, the same um, double gas electrons. SE2 bigger. is bigger because it's downward. Yeah, it has more electron shells. Yeah. That's the word. Exactly. So in that case, SE two minus is larger than P three minus, right? Do we agree on that? Because phosphor, phosphide has the electron configuration of argon and selenium or selenide has the same, the electron configuration of krypton. 
if you look on the periodic table, krypton is below argon. Therefore, it, it would still have a larger, um, what's it called, ionic radius. Okay. So that is a potential answer. What about I minus being smaller than calcium two plus? It's false. He says false. So if we look at I minus, it has the same configuration as xenon. Whereas, whereas calcium would have the same configuration as argon, right? Calcium two plus. So calcium two plus would have the same configuration as argon. Between xenon and argon, which one's larger? Xenon. So I minus, and it's also further down, but I minus would be larger than CA2 plus, right? So that's clearly not our answer. Li plus would be smaller than What about A? Anions are bigger. So Cl minus is greater than Cl. So AS3 minus has a configuration of krypton. And yttrium uh, 3 plus would have configuration of krypton as well. Yeah, that'd be ionic. Oh, and then okay. atomic is like so which one is going to be bigger to these are a iso electronic okay. species yeah. the cation okay exactly so there's actually two answers for this one but you said that i said a i didn't know i didn't even look at t oh interesting yeah so there is two answers for this one and then lithium plus being bigger than astatine is absolutely wrong uh Need I explain? Just, I mean, look at the periodic. Okay, I need to explain it now. Yeah, just look at the periodic table. Lithium has the same configuration as helium, or lithium plus has the same configuration as helium, and um, astatine uh, would have the same configuration as radon. Clearly, helium is like the smallest element, and lithium plus is even smaller than helium. Uh, so the answers for this one are A and B. Are we good on that one? So this is your ionic radius. This is chapter seven or I think it's eight. Chapter eight is your uh, whole periodic trends and stuff. We what got chapter are you guys on right now? We just started the Sort of geometries. Dr. Armand just sent the last uh, video. The last video? video? The hybridization. Yeah, the I last hybridization. Video last video ever? For the, I thought he said it was the last one for this. Oh, okay. Never mind. Yeah. Is it on? It feels oh, it's probably like, not. It feels like we're behind. <laughs> we, we just started talking about like linear. Yeah. That's we haven't started. done any of like the hybridization stuff. Oh, Reeves, right? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Oh, we're oh. always behind. All right, one more, and we'll go ahead and call it a day. Okay. Seventeen. I know we didn't get through all the way through twenty, but that's okay. I know Michelle's probably banging in her head right now. Michelle, you can keep doing, keep going on at your own pace. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to hold you back, all right? Just try to get through another ten this weekend. Awesome. Michelle knows what's up. Michelle wants that one hundred. You know what? If any of y'all finish the entire review and get it all correct, I'll, I don't know, give y'all like a huge bag of candy or something. Really? Yeah. Bro, they're, they're in college, they don't want candy. Yeah. Gotta, I want candy. Okay, never mind. You have to give us 50 Alex coins. It's like you give two max. Two max? I feel like you're the type of guy that would give like two max <laughs> for finishing the entire thing. Damn, which is a piece of candy. <laughs> What are the Alex points? Oh my God. I think we don't get those. So those don't count. Candy is better. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Not, not everybody has the opportunity. Right. Wow. I always have the opportunity to get texted. That's the next year. <laughs> that is not true. That is not true. You're, you're coming to a session that's not even for your class. <laughs> Technically, you're not even supposed to be here coming. I'm just kidding. We, well, we, we love all of our just wants to learn. And we like all of our students. Education. That's it. Okay, what's the, Michelle, what's the answer to 17? Sorry, I just put you on the spot like that.
Shell says C question mark. Are you saying that confidently or are you asking me? That's like the largest chunk. Yeah. Yeah. And then the yeah, yeah, you have to find the shortest and the longest. So I'm gonna go with two to four and three to four. So for this one, you kind of have to think of the okay. So it, if it's being absorbed, if it's absorbing a photon, the one that's going to have the highest energy is going to be pushed out from a lower energy level. So the the highest energy photon is going to be able to eject the electron from the lowest energy. Um, or yeah, I guess the lowest energy level. So what I like to do for this type of problem is I like to reverse the energy level. So I'll, I'll say, I kind of cross it out and say, this one goes from four to two. This one goes from eight to four. This one goes from 12 to three. This one goes from 10 to two. All right. And then I'll just cross out. Well, I won't cross it out. I'll just, I won't look at this portion anymore. Okay. Because electrons go from, a low end, they go from ground state to excited state, and then eventually they go back from that excited state back to their ground state, and they're going to emit a photon of equal magnitude, right? And then, all right, so with this, which one is going to emit a photon with the longest wave? Oh, okay. A. Okay, she says A. Interesting. Why would you say A? Um, because it went from four to two, that's only two energy levels. It's going to give us the least energy and therefore the longest wavelength. So the least energy. So you also have to keep in mind, Maria, what, what are the series that we look at here? I know, but I was like N12. I don't know any that's ending on N12. No, remember, I said, don't look at this anymore. I said, it's going from 12 to three now. It you should reverse it. Because if it's absorbing it, once that electron returns to the ground state, it's going to go from 12 to three. You can't place the electron back in here in the fourth energy level because that's already occupied. Okay, so which which one of the series is four? None so if you look at the trend here, when it ends in n equals one, what is that? Oh, that's um, Lyman. Lyman, and that's what you mean. Yeah. When it ends in n equals two, that's what Balmer. And then that's why, yeah. Visible, right? So visible, uh, visible light. And then n equals three. That's Chen, and that's um, infrared. So IR. You notice a trend in terms of the energies. Three has is going to have a lower energy than one, right? Three also has a lower energy than two. So as you go up, so we could predict that n equals four would have even lower energy than n equals three. So it can, who knows what it is. It could be, let's just say microwave, okay? All right, so the one that's gonna have the longest wavelength is the lowest in energy, which is gonna go from any energy level to, um, well, we know that these would, let's just say that, you know, these emit a photon in the visible region. These emit a photon in the visible region. This one in IR, and this one in let's just say whatever it's we know it should be lower in energy than any of these two. So let's just say, may say it's microwave. That's not, I'm not sure if that's true, but let's just say it is okay. Because if we look at the trend here, we see that as we our electron lands in an energy level higher than the previous one, we're decreasing the amount of energy of that photon. So it's kind of, you have to be able to, for this problem, you have to be able to use trends in what you know to apply it to see like what the next, um, kind of predict what the next energy level will have. Like you can't say, okay, so we're clearly decreasing in energy as we go down, right? So would it make sense to jump up to back to visible light or UV? It doesn't, right? There's clearly a trend here. And I bet you, if you were to look it up online, you would see that. N equals four emits a photon that is lower in energy than IR. Okay. So which one would be the highest energy then? And why do you say B? 
Uh, so it ends on visible light, and then the change is greater than A. Yes. So when it is emitted, it goes from 10 to 2, right? And that's we know that's Balmer series, so it's invisible light. But because it has the greatest jump in energy levels, it's going a change in energy levels of eight energy levels compared to this one. There's only two energy levels. This one's going to be higher in energy, therefore a shorter length, wavelength. If you had to guess what color this would be relative to this one in the visible light region, what would you say this one is? Purple. Yeah, something probably blue or purple. And this would probably be red or orange. Yeah. Does that make sense now, Maria? Um, um, Good talk, Maria. Okay. A question. Why can't we just solve for it using the formula negative two points? You wanna you wanna solve for each of these and then figure it out? I mean you could, but that's a lot of work. I'm I'm not sure if you have enough time for that on. A test. You know, you know how gross that Rydberg equation is. You want to do that four times. Okay, if that works for you, go ahead and do it. Personally, my expert opinion, I would not go that route because that that equation takes me like five minutes to do one problem. To set it up. Yeah, just to set it up and solve for the right variable without any calculation issues, and then to plug it in four separate times is a lot of time. I don't know if my calculator can do that. <laughs> yeah, this is what you said. It all go about it is this goal right here. Which calculator do you have? So, yeah. So, on I guess Thursday, yeah, on Monday, we'll wait. Oh, yeah, we have class Monday and Wednesday. Next week. I'm not sure if we'll do anything on Wednesday just because everyone's going to be home and no one's going to want to study chemistry. Well, you can do a lot of stuff. Just keep doing these problems, and then next time we'll go over it. Maybe it goes to our code, and then we'll be going on your way. Really?